Bienvenue à Vox Terra. Today, I want to, I'm going to call this show New York Climate Leadership and Protection Act Under Attack. Stick with me because whether you're from New York or not, this video is going to help show you how this world of ours really operates. There's a major campaign blitz against it on YouTube. And from what I can see, what this is really all about is defending the natural gas industry and the fossil fuel industry in general. One of the ads starts off by saying something like, they're coming for your natural gas stove and appliances. Furnaces, oil boilers, wood stoves, and gasoline-fueled cars. Well, look, these tactics have worked time and time again to prevent us from having a cleaner, healthier, less toxic, less polluted world. Now, the New York State Climate Leadership and Protection Act sets targets to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. Then there's something called a scoping plan or a scoping com and a scoping committee to figure out, well, how do we meet these goals? You got tension here between, you know, fossil fuel interests who want to see things one way, who want to protect that industry, and environmentalists are actual environmentalists, in my opinion, groups like Sierra Club, Alliance for a Green Economy, Renewable Heat Now, and, and if I share the image with you, you'll see a young man in the, at a protest rally wearing a Rage Against the Machine t-shirt. These groups are all calling for, you know, in addition to other environmental protections like wilderness set aside, you know, better better stewardship of nature, renewable energy, something something called electrification. And, and, and in the case of buildings, building electrification. Let me share with you an EPA, Environmental Protection Agency pie chart, you know, that breaks down how much greenhouse gases come from what sector. And here I think you're going to see about maybe 13% in the U.S. coming from, build, you know, buildings or commercial residential. And here they're primarily talking about heating cooling of buildings so this electrification goal or a proposal within the scoping committee scoping plan would be taking us away from natural gas and it's that getting us away from natural gas that i think has really got that industry spooked so i'm just going to build for you my evidence that these ads are fossil fuel industry sponsored these ads cite you to a group called Cleaner Energy New York. And I looked at their website and I scrolled to their in the news section. One article, California natural gas bans are drawing fire from black and Latino leaders by Forbes. Another article, gas versus electric, which one is better for your home by Martha Stewart. I mentioned in other videos that I saw a Mother Jones article that exposed that a lot of social media influencers who come out saying how awesome awesome natural gases are actually getting sponsorship from those that industry but they're not telling you now another section on their website leads you towards other resources and i want to point out here youtube build with propane and another one national propane gas association now i try to google search who's sponsoring them but this stuff's hard to find okay but what i did find was a really interesting article sponsored by an organization called Little Sis, which is some kind of like a muckraking, expose, kind of follow the money group. And their headline article is this. Listen to this one. Fossil fuel industry mobilizes front group to weaken New York climate law. Now that group cited in their article is called New Yorkers for Affordable Energy. Now not the same as the group sponsoring these ads, but we can believe there's maybe there's a relationship. And the image that that article depicts American Petroleum Institute Enbridge, National Fuel, National Grid, as some of the fossil fuel backers of New Yorkers for affordable energy. Now, both of the ads I've got clips of warn you that this New York Climate Act is going to force you to spend buckets of money to electrify your home. New York State's proposed climate action plan would force you to switch to electric cars, heaters, and stoves, no matter how much they cost. Well, my impression is this is disingenuous. My understanding is we're talking over a 30-year time period of a phase-in. And when we talk about the costs, you know, don't give in to that thinking. What do I mean by that? Well, first of all, remember one of my main talking points. There's no free market. Okay, this whole thing is subsidized. Look at Oil Change International. They're going to show you subsidies to the oil and gas industry. You know about tax abatements, tax grants, government-built infrastructure. And the more these technologies scale up or become more used, the more the costs are going to come down. Don't follow these people and oppose it. Instead, demand help with it. Now, what I know about heat pumps, which seems to be the real issue that seems to be scaring these people they're opposed to, 
These things called geothermal heat pumps where you dig wells in the ground and pump up that stable temperature, rock solid, work really well, and over a long enough time period pay for themselves. But a lot of average people like us can't afford them. Pump number two is called an air source heat pump where you're taking that latent energy or latent heat out of the air and pumping that into the building. Now, my contacts got one that, that she purchased in 2015, and she says if it gets super freezing, like I think under the 20s or in the low 20s, then she's got to use a backup. But she claims the newer ones, they got cold climate heat pumps now that work pretty well. Well, either way, geothermal air source, we're talking about potentially less fossil fuels to operate them. And they're leaving out that heat pumps are not the only solution on the table. Page 119 of the scoping document, or at least the one I saw, also calls for lowering carbon by what, what they call the building envelope, or maybe meaning the insulation of the building, or you could even be talking about the, how the windows are facing to let in heat or keep out heat. They also talk about reusing existing buildings to lower carbon and, and reusing building materials materials. So again, we got reuse. And also in that plan, there's natural climate solutions as well in there, which they're not mentioning in these attack ads. The ad also warns the grid will become less reliable. Even though the electric grid will become even less reliable. You know, I gotta believe it's really just the opposite. Studies I've covered, like one from the National Renewable Energy Laboratory that was talked about in an Atlantic article, shows how you can make a more connected, more reliable grid to facilitate renewable energy. We've all heard the term solar by day and wind by night. So that's the mainstay is a connected, more reliable grid. And another thing climate activists are always talking about is a more resilient grid that can withstand these new extreme climactic conditions. Think Texas, how their natural gas lines froze. Then they go on to say, you know, it is gonna have little real impact. Little actual impact on the global climate. So what, what do you make of that? Why have try what's new york state gonna matter i i don't know i don't really know what they mean by it but that's how it comes across to me small business owners will suffer new york small businesses will suffer as well I, you know anybody can say that i could say not doing this is going to hurt small business well, what do i mean by that you know i just paying higher insurance because of all the climate disasters having to deal with an energy grid and energy supply system where the prices just go way up and way down that's fossil fuels for you i could say all the all the installers of heat pumps who are never going to get a job all the people maintaining wind turbines are not going to get a job. And we haven't even looked at the natural climate solutions like using forestry, using agriculture to sequester carbon. You know, who's going to get nice jobs out of that? They claim there's a carbon tax. Everyone will suffer new carbon taxes. You know what? I looked through the scoping document. I asked one of my contacts at Sierra Club. I, I didn't say anything about a carbon tax. But here, here's why they're a good idea. Fossil fuels and, and nuclear too, for that matter, have an unfair competitive advantage against renewables because nuclear and fossil fuels don't have to pay the true cost of their pollution. So they've only seemed cheaper all these years. Tell them you've gone too far before it's too late. Well, you know, to me, that's like a Freudian slip. What do I mean by a Freudian slip? I mean, your subconscious mind speaking. That's like a guilty conscious talking through. Yeah, things have gone too far, amigo. We got, amiga, we got the climate change feedback loops kicking in. Meaning, you know, as that polar ice is melting, right, you're losing that big reflector off of the planet. That ocean's absorbing more heat, melting more ice, losing more of a reflector for one. You look at the EPA, it tells you right there that because of warmer winters, you got Lyme's disease bearing ticks crawling all over the place now. Well, that includes includes New York State. They, they weren't always there. You can look at NOAA to see that lake ice is receding. Not just polar Arctic ice, but the ice on the Great Lakes is receding. Well, not just New York State, but you got, you got heavier rainfall patterns now. You got more intense drought patterns, increase in heat waves, increase in wildfires. So who's gone too far it is an industry trying to protect itself, not taking its profits and reinvesting in doing business differently. They sell fuel, they want to keep selling fuel. So the defenders of fossil fuels have a nice, easy click on, slick website, great, easy to follow. I wish I could find an environmentalist one that was just so well put together, but you know what? They're not as well funded. So take it upon yourself and just call your, if you're in New York State, call your state assembly member or call your, your, your state senate member, call that scoping committee comments if they're still open by the time you watch the video and tell them you want strong climate action, you want electrification, you want to get away from fossil fuels, you just want help doing it.
And whatever state you live in or nation, there's going to be an analogous. It could be smarter energy, fill in the blank. And they're going to have all kinds of, you know, industry, what I call propaganda. Well, hey, I hope you found this video helpful, entertaining. If you did, please make sure you're subscribed to my channel. You're clicking that there notification bell. You're liking, you're commenting, you're joining my one patron at Patreon. Thank you, Environmental Coffee House. And until next time, as always, peace be with you.